Yo! Y'all asked for a Q&A, now here it is. I'm Story Project, and I'm just a regular guy, just like you. Just built a little different. Let's get the basic intros out of the way. I'm 28, same height as Biscuit Oliver, and I weigh around roughly 205 to 210 pounds, depends on how I feel. I don't know, my PR maxes are like bench, squash, and deadlift. I'm not gonna say probably around, probably 410 on bench. I'm probably 500, probably 485, squat, I don't know. Squat's not really that good. I deadlift probably like 45, 600, one of those numbers. A lot of you asking me what my occupation, what I do for a career. Well, give or take my career, actually I can't really say that on YouTube. So just bear with me when I say I'm there in cross breed between these two right here. I don't want my employer put me in the office saying you're, it just goes to information and it's not street. So try to keep a job, people. A lot of you think that I'm a personal trainer, trainer like that. Nope. I'm just a regular guy just like you. I'm not a trainer. I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not a power lifter. I'm not a strong man, and I really don't consider myself as a martial artist. I'm pretty much a polyathlete, if you really think about it. Thinking about a chimera, in a way, melts upon a different thing. So, let's get into some of these questions. All right, first question is, how long have I been training? Well, that's no really answer. I played PBD football, so technically speaking, that kind of counts as training. I had a, a strong passion for martial arts, probably since I was the age of five. My mother was a big Bruce Lee fanatic, so she, we had all the movies, so I kind of fell in love with that. But truth be told, I really started training, training, like, you know, muscular-wise, when I was around the ages of 14. I played middle school football, so uh, that transitioned over to high school, so I played uh, football all four years of my high school high school career. So in terms of the weightlifting area, I always had that under my belt. Pretty much when I was 16, I was kind of looking normal like I kind of am now, just a little smaller. Next question is, how many styles of combat do you know? That is a good question. I'm not gonna tell you. If you haven't known it, I'm a man of mission. I really don't give a straight answer just because it's fun. It's like I like people like I like I want people to figure stuff out. Use the brain, right? It's no fun being figured out. So pretty much if you can count the styles I do in my video, you can pretty much get it. But later on I would do a video of each one of my styles that I know. So therefore you get a grasp of, of, of how many I know. But I will give you a good number of nine. Just to say it like that. But I know a little bit more. Uh, next question is, do you train or learn in a dojo, gym, or, or MMA? Okay, so I was going to uh, MMA gym when I was in college. Uh, that was the only way I could really pretty much, you know, get the proper training in. It was straight glass gym. Other than that, uh, no, since I graduated college, I pretty much turned my garage into a home gym. So pretty much I just go there and do my basic workouts. Now, before COVID, I was going to a local MMA gym, you know, sparring with people just to stay polished. But uh, since COVID happened, I pretty much just vary my times. I probably get some couple friends that I knew from college that probably come through, we probably spar. Not too heavy going hard sparring, but to stay, you know, fighting prior experience, you know, in that fight knowledge just in case something comes about. Okay, next question is, what made you start martial Arts. Okay, this is going to be a long answer, so bear with me now. Don't get bored when I tell you this. All right, so I was kind of the baki of me growing up. So in a sense, my father was literally Euro, and pretty much I idolized my father. I wanted to be everything like my father. And on the flip side of that, my mother was a huge Bruce Lee fanatic. So I, I pretty much got um, fascinated with Bruce Lee because pretty much we had all his movies. So my mother used to watch them all the time. So I was right there watching the same thing too. On my father's side, my father was huge. I mean, he was huge. It's on the picture I have of him right now, but he was huge. And it's like, that was everything I wanted to be. Like muscular, huge, boom, like everything that my dad was. And everywhere we went, it was a sense of fear from everyone he talked to. It was like, I wanted that in a degree. Now, I didn't want everybody to fear me, but I wanted that, that power and respect. 
So at the young age, I was like, I gotta, I'm finna do something. But on on a darker tip, we, me and my father used to fight like Kazuya and Hahachi and Baki and Yujiro. And it was like, just like Kazuya and just like Baki, I lost. I got my ass whooped a lot. But it wasn't, don't get it wrong, it wasn't like child abuse. It was literally like tough. It like tough, grew up tough. So, and my goal was to learn everything I could to beat this man one day. And around the ages of 13, 14, that's when I started, you know, getting muscular definition. Puberty hit me like a Mack truck. Hit me like Topo, he did freeze on Dragon Ball Super. I'm talking, mm -hmm. but I'm um, pretty much, I was like, I had a fighting chance then, but not to put too much in my family business, my father had got sick with a brain tumor and he lost a lot of his muscle, a lot of his strength. <laughs> so it got to the point, it was like, it was, there was no point anymore. And unfortunately my father passed away, I was 14 and I was pissed, I was pissed at the world. And I was angry and could, because the one person, the only one person I wanted to prove myself to had, was gone and I was lost. I had no purpose anymore. So I literally took the knowledge and uh, background that I learned from martial arts coming from, you know, family members, friends, and associates. And I took that out on the world. So I fought. So the, in the streets, in the school, I fought. That was my getting fighting experience. And at a young age, I say I was pretty lethal. And it was like, you know, I was mad at the world. Until one day, I got into a very, very bad altercation with the guy who was pretty much asthmatic and he stopped breathing and we ran, but we didn't know if he lived or not. Thank God that we found out he actually did, but that wasn't one of the moments like, I didn't want to be that ruthless person. And as I got older in school, I it was some, you know, some friends that was interested in the MMA and Coming up, I didn't really tell nobody that I did stuff like that because pretty much I was like, I wouldn't say ashamed, but we wouldn't like, you know, I grew up in the south, southern area of, you know, United States and people are not too much keen on martial arts. So I didn't want to come off as weird and strange because I was into, you know, actually true martial arts. So I kind of kept that on the back burner and hush hush. So on time it came out when I got into like a school fight or into a street fight. Now I rarely got into street fights. I rarely got into school fights because like I said, people hit me like a Mack truck, so I was already, you know, pretty much the same size I am now at this age. So 16, 17, I was like, you know, boom, boom. But pretty much, you know, I was cool with everybody, so I didn't have to use those skills. So pretty much that's how I got, you know, interested in martial arts. All right, next question is, how often do you work out? All right, so I work out five days a week with two rest days. So that's Monday through Friday and Generally, weekends is when I rest. I uh, work out a little different than everybody else. I have a full heavy week where I just do outrageous week, and I pretty much have my second week where I just do more of a light weight, high reps week. Well, I wouldn't say lightweight, medium weight with high reps. And my third week, I do not touch one weight. I just do pure calisthenic body weight workouts and my martial arts training. Now, I work out two hours out of the week, so therefore, Monday to Friday, that probably the first hour I'm doing all weights, and then I, the last hour I'm doing either heavy bag or doing like heavy bag drills with my martial arts, any type of combative skills, in form of some form of cardio. Um, other than that, that's pretty much my basic workouts what I do. It's nothing, it's not no crazy thing that I'm doing, you know, I'm not out here pushing mountains and stuff like that. I gotta say it, I'm just a regular guy just like you. The next question is, do you train or did you learn in a dojo or gym or were you ever formally trained or self-taught? All right, so this is gonna be another long answer. My mother was a medical assistant at this um, clinic uh, where she worked at when I was seven and her, one of the doctors there, her name was Dr. Chen, he was from China and he was skilled in Chinese martial arts and Wing Chun. That's why I learned my Chinese background martial arts and Wing Chun. Now, mama, if you're watching this, do not get mad at Dr. Chen, this is your fault because you introduced me to Bruce Lee. So, um, pretty much, uh, on the pickback of that, why I learned like that, I was kind of like the karate kid 
and I was kind of like Baki. I went around pretty much, you know, learning different various styles and stuff like that because I didn't want to put too, too much strain on my mother or my parents because I was playing Pee Wee League football and I was also going to the Boys and Girls Club. So therefore, I didn't want them to enroll me into a martial arts school and put my strain on because they was both working and I didn't want them to spend their money on me. So I learned literally here and there. I actually got it from Michael Jai White. Pretty much, I learned some of my boxing skills from uh, the Boys and Girls Club. I learned some of my Taekwondo skills from Boys and Girls Club. I also um, learned some form of wrestling background from the Boys and Girls Club. I learned from different places, uh, from wrestling, wrestling with friends, stuff like that. Even though that was very informal, that was something that I, we picked up on. I know we used to go to the park and it was this older man. He had a, um, he was a wrestler and he had a studio. We used to uh, go to his backyard and wrestle. So that's kind of where my wrestling background came from. Pretty much Muay Thai. I learned Muay Thai when, I actually learned Muay Thai more than in my 20s. I actually, when I turned 20, uh, we had a plan to go to Panama City Beach out of college and it was spring break and pretty much one of my friends flaked out and so um the mma gym i was going to at the time it was straight last gym pretty much we um they had an open spot for me because one of their friends flaked out too so i was like that's kind of lucky so it was all all uh it's free expense paid trip so we uh went there and that was probably my best worst decision ever in life because for one they go so hard in Thailand. It's like they don't know what you know. Pull back, pull punches. Me, they go so. I I would probably say that was the very first time I ever had true bruise real. I'm talking about like body shots, boom, boom, boom. But like true bruise ribs, yeah, it was the first time. But it taught me, you know, toughness over there. So that's where I got my Muay Thai experience from. Karate. I had an uncle who was in the army and. Uh, pretty much he used to teach me um, little basic karate katas and basic straight punches and kicks stuff like that. I didn't want too much to roll into a karate school for one petty reason. I just didn't want to begin. I mean, that's all the reason. But in, my, in terms of my most insufficient style, this karate is probably one of the ones that I'm least um, skilled at. Next to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is probably one of my roughest styles that I know right now because I didn't really, um, pretty much, I want to say take the time out to learn, but I didn't, I don't practice it regularly like I do my others because you know, others I can use that in my gym or I can pretty much just go out and about in local gym and impress my striking stuff like that. But when it comes to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm not that adept, so in terms of that. I'm probably like a low tier when it comes to music musician. Everything else, I kind of much just brashed up on that, you know, kind of, you know, knew the basic skills and drills. So you can kind of say I'm not really self-taught, but self-taught and agree to further my martial arts skills on my own. So when I actually uh, graduated college and got my house, I pretty much turned my gym into my own uh, home gym. So that's why you see my videos. I have various uh, martial arts tools from the heavy bag to the um, move John to pretty much the striking dummy to pretty much everything you see in the videos. All right, next question is, are you in any MMA slash boxing fights or are you going to start? And if so, do you have any videos and pictures? Okay, I actually did have videos and pictures, but it's in my old phone that's destroyed. So yeah, I didn't back up anything. I thought it was in the cloud. I only got one picture out of that whole ordeal and I actually put it on my Instagram. It's still up there. That's the only thing that I got to my name in terms of like martial arts like confirmation that I was in the cage at one point but I didn't if I didn't go pro or anything like that I did amateur fights but uh, other than that I mean not necessarily too many videos um I didn't like people pretty much coming to my fights because I was a whole different I was an animal and it was like I didn't want people saying about that because I always had this you know calm cool collective type person by myself but then I had the other side about me and it was like I remember one of my girlfriends uh, at the time came to one of my fights and she seen how brutal I was and it was like it kind of put fear in her because I guess she thought I was going to do that to her and I didn't want anybody to feel that type of fear towards me and it's like yeah I'm, I didn't want people to pretty much see me in that limelight like that. And also I was fighting underground 
And I'm not talking like Fight Club Underground. I'm not talking about that. No, that's boo boo. I'm talking about like, you know, Fight Underground, like at local clubs, bars. Um, I noticed I was fighting, I was actually fighting for this Baka game uh, down in the South. Uh, I had came back from um, pretty much college, and we was on college um, semester break, and pretty much I was working security at this teen club. And one of the um, security guards there, his father was a biker gang leader, I guess, charter member, whatever you want to say, I don't know how he goes. But he was in some MMA, and I went down to their um, their clubhouse, and they had a whole MMA cage in there. So it was like, um, I went in there, knocked around a couple times, and it was like, hey, we set up fights all the time. We want you to fight for us, come down here. And they told me the time schedule. And I was going down there and I was pretty much, you know, fighting for the biker club. But I wasn't in the biker memory. It was just, you know, I can't tell you who the biker people do because I don't want them knocking at my door saying you're giving secrets of the club up. So just trust me on that. But if you, two, I'm saying 205, if you, you stay in 205, you know exactly what biker club I'm talking about. In BTO, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, yeah. So pretty much, I that fight underground. Now wasn't like the maximum tournament in uh, Baki and stuff like that in King of Sure. No, it was really like just clubs, bars. You know, I was uh, fighting. It was one club had a boxing ring, so I did the boxing in there too. So that was pretty fun. That I would say that I had more fun doing that than in the MMA cage because the MMA cage has so many rules and it's like it's for the safety of the fighter but it takes away the technicality and it takes away skill set for certain fighters because there's certain things that are not allowed in the cage so it's like it kind of puts a handicap on them but for the safety wise it's pretty much more safe than an underground fighter because literally the only medical staff we had was like a nursing student yeah now that I think about it that was smart to do underground but I have fun though. Alright next question is what made you decide to go vegan? Okay this actually is a very good question. Alright so what people don't know is protein comes from plants and at the time I wanted to you know get a little bit more shredded more defined and muscular because it was a big difference for me when I was an omnivore slash carnivore to uh, me trying to go vegan and I found out that Protein has to come from plants. And once you really think about it, pretty much animals, beef, and all that, you know, that people swear it comes from protein, they're actually the middleman. They're actually the plug. They're not the source, you know what I'm saying? So it's like they literally become what they eat. So they eat plants and they become a source of protein. But when you really think about it, elephants, rhinos, horses, gorillas, they're all herbivores and they're the strongest animals on the planet so therefore they eat plants and they're strong so i literally took that gamble and see that was actually true and yeah you see the result that i've done so it's like yeah that would make me ultimately go vegan it was like this is actually beneficial and then also on another tip it's like in terms of energy output uh, muscle recovery, reduce fat loss, improve blood flow, uh, reduce inflammation, and healthier body composition. That all comes from, you know, being vegan and vegetarian. So that's ultimately why I decided to go that route. And also, I'm not gonna lie, I come from a somewhat form of, of ill family background. So I'm trying to take precautions of not becoming that statistic of getting sick when I get older in age so therefore I plan on looking like this when I turn 65 at the six and when I turn 66 I'm calling it quits at that point but for right now I'm trying to look the same way for as long as possible all right next question is do you work out in strength or hypertrophy all right that's actually both I uh, do my videos you can see I do you know various styles of workouts I do from strength training to pretty much uh, calisthenics to hypertrophy to pretty much you know you know strong man body being workouts and that's that's one of the beneficial of pretty much you know doing everything to stay in complete fit matter see that's my main goal my main goal is not to be any of those things in one distinct factor my main goal is to be complete and what I mean complete is that I can do literally anything and everything possible because one of my favorite 
biblical verses is I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me for Philippians 4.13 so therefore my main goal is to be complete so that's why I work out in very different fashions all right next question is what training video was the most difficult all right fun fact my Retsu Kayo video, I was injured. I had a sprained wrist and a sprained ankle. And if you go, if you look closely, you can tell I was not as explosive as in my other videos. So that's a fun fact. You know that one. That was probably one of the most difficult, just because I was injured. But I try not to show it on camera. All right. So the final question is, what is the next series you're going to do? All right, so I honestly don't know. It's like you guys have so many different requests and different tastes and outlook that's not on par with everyone else. So it's kind of difficult to pretty much say. It's like you guys range from Naruto to like Kingen to like, you know, one guy asked me to do Guts. The other guy asked me to do Dual from Rocky. It's like the guy with the switches and the spots on his body. Like, ah, uh, yeah, I see. see he, it's kind of difficult to say. So I honestly don't know. I'm really just playing by ear. I want to do, you know, Tekken characters, but pretty much everyone is so set on, you know, Baki and King Asher and characters, and they want me to do these low tier, mid tier characters. So kind of trying to play it by ear but i am working on something to pretty much make sure everybody gets what they want so stay in tune with that uh, other than that i can't successfully say what i'm doing next but my next video will be someone you have requested for the longest time so be on the lookout for that make sure you turn the notifications on because if you don't youtube will not notice for you so make sure you turn all notifications on so you get all my content every time i upload Oh, another reason why I don't uh, upload on the, uh, pretty much a week of is because of work. Uh, sometimes I have out of town things. I've always told what my job was. Sometimes I have uh, out of town things to do, and sometimes I will get back home to like late in the evening. So it's kind of hard for me to actually, you know, make content on a weekly basis. But I'm going to try to do something in that regard. I'm going to try to do more of these type when I actually talk to you guys. I'm going to try to do more. Um, basic workouts and also on top of the anime video so the anime videos will continue I'm just gonna try to pump out more videos through weekly basis so bear with me and stay tuned all right so that's the end of the q and I hope I answered all the questions you were looking for sorry I couldn't disclose certain information because you know uh, I'm a legal guy to not say anything so therefore thank you for tuning in for people who made it this far uh, if anything I'll uh, share this video make sure you like subscribe and share my content also you can follow me on my Instagram at Borderline Genius here. Also, um, quick tip: I'm leaving you guys before I sign off. Make sure you lift as you climb. Never leave nobody behind. See you at the top because the ball's too crowded. This is Story Project signing off. Go dark.